the most important procedure of working on a table saw is the alignment. In other words, what we want to do is get our saw blade to run as parallel to the miter groove as we possibly can. Now the technique we're going to show you actually establishes the arbor shaft square to the groove. And if the arbor shaft square to the groove, then the blade needs to be, will be parallel to it. One thing I want to show you is you notice how I've got the dial indicator pointed downward. I do that because the closer I can get to the center line of the blade, the bigger the distance is across here. And the bigger the distance we measure across, the more obvious the error is. And it allows us to set our saw more accurately. Now what you want to do is bring your blade all the way up and lower it an eighth to a quarter of an inch. You want to make sure you're not limited out on that blade. Remove your insert and install the smart bar into the groove. Now the way you should do this is you want the spring plungers, these little plungers out on the side, to be away from the blade pushing the bar toward the side of the groove that's closest to the blade. Set the mounting bar over the notch in the smart bar and push that forward. Now you notice here I'm making contact with the blade but I'm not lined up on one of the holes so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this in just a little bit. Remember that indicator's got a one inch stroke and once I get that installed I drop the three quarter inch Allen screw in here and we lock it down. Make sure it's nice and snug. You don't want this thing being sloppy. The next thing you do, check to see if it rocks. I don't know whether you can see this on your screen, but we've got a little bit of a wobble here. And what I'm going to do is just barely touch these locking knobs. That's too high. You can rock in either direction. So what we're going to do is back this out just a little bit. And we want to make sure we can't rock. This ensures we're going to get an accurate reading. Take a felt tip pen and right behind the carbide, put a little dot out there. We're going to use this as our reference point. Now, what we're going to do, and I need to explain this to you. Matter of fact, I'm going to take this out. I want to show you something. Right here on the outside of the dial indicator, you see a little knob. That's the locking knob for the dial. If we loosen this, we can actually rotate that scale to establish our zero point. So what we're going to do is put the align it back in. We're going to put the tip of the indicator right on that spot on the blade. I'm going to loosen that and I'm going to rotate the dial to set up to zero. Okay? Pull it out, let it spring back, make sure you got a good solid zero point. Once you have that set, what you're going to do is actually rotate the blade and put that spot at the rear and you slide the dial indicator, put it on the same point. If your saw is perfectly aligned, you'll be on zero. If the pointer goes under the zero, that means the distance on the rear is further from the slot than we were on the front. Now in this case, what we would need to do would be to go to the rear of the saw, on a contractor saw that is, and we would adjust the pals to push the rear end to the left. If you're working with a, a uh, cabinet saw, Delta Unisaw Powermatic 66, and this distance is left, less, what you're going to need to do is to loosen three of the four bolts on the Unisaw. Powermatic, I believe, only has three. And you're going to actually move the table to bring that groove closer on the back side. Once you think your setting's right, come back to the front, recheck your zero, go back to the back, do this two or three times just to make sure you're consistent. And once you get that setting within a couple thousandths of an inch, lock the saw to where it can't move.